Hi everyone, this is Not Your Sponsor and welcome to my hobby channel. This is the first video of a series where we will be covering the entire painting and weathering process of the Tamiya 148th scale EC8 Sherman tank. This kit is part of the 148th scale range from Tamiya. In this case, I kept assembly directly out of the box. In addition to the raw plastic, I also improved some parts by adding details. Some casting texture to the turret and hull by applying Tamiya grey putty. The tow cable from the kit was replaced by a humid one made from copper wire. Also, I represented an external mirror for the driver and some supports with metal sheet for a spare gear. Finally, I glued to the rear armor some extra track links copied from acrylic resin. Here is the model right now. You can see all the pieces together. Trucks and running gear are not glued yet. Ok, so before I start painting, I like to clean my models from dust and plastic particles. I take common alcohol and a flat brush and I clean all the surfaces. Well, now it's time to take the airbrush. I use Vallejo Solid Drop Acrylic Primer. Also, I use Vallejo Airbrush Thinner for the dilution. More or less, I apply a 50% ratio. I always begin by airbrushing the less exposed areas of the model, just to be sure the paint dilution is right, and I avoid ruining other parts of the tank. It's very important to apply a thin coat each time, letting it dry until we apply the second coat. I work carefully and try to cover all the recesses and hidden parts. You can see now how the paint gets more solid with the second coat. For example here, I insist until the paint gets inside all the details of the engine grills. On the turret, the painting is very similar. Just a few passes were needed to prime the whole piece. Small parts, such as the road wheels, have to be primed too. I prepared each wheel separately to be able to paint just one by one. This is the result we get after priming the model. The tank is getting an interesting look, but still there is not enough contrast and definition on it, and we'll fix this later. In my opinion, Vallejo Olive Drop is not very accurate. If we look for a historical accurate color paint, Chamiya XF62 is a very good reference to use directly from the pot. This color is pretty similar to the ones used to paint the US World War II vehicles and equipments. I thinned the paint with Tamiya thinner for acrylics. This time I go for a 60% paint and 40% thinner ratio. As many of you can know, working with Tamiya acrylics means excellent coverage and paint flow. I start airbrushing the olive drop again on the lower parts and hull sides. Primer paint is doing its job and I only focus on applying thin coats of paint. Working over the primer coat, it's easier now, because we don't have to care about paint covering capabilities. I keep working on individual plates and small sections. Again, it will be necessary to apply thick coats until we get the desired result. Just notice the nice flat finish of Tamiya paints. Olive drop color is airbrushed around all the tank as well. I don't forget about the running gear. Now I apply the base coat only on the wheels and the running gear. Once the base coat has been applied, it's time to move to the height lighting process. For this purpose, I take Tamiya's XF15 flat flesh. I like to choose this color when I look for a quick and simple height lighting process for green tanks. I add a few drops of paint to the previous dilution until I see the mix gets lighter. We are defining parts of the vehicle, so it is important to know where we have to apply the paint. For the first highlights, I always apply the paint all over the vehicle. I work in a similar way on the turret. I focus in airbrushing crew hatches and turret roof. Applying paint on horizontal and sloped areas is going to create a pretty interesting zenithal highlight. Painting and contrasting tiny parts will increase the amount of detail. For the second highlights, I add again more XF15 to the color mix. This time I apply highlights in a different way. This new lighter color is going to be applied only on horizontal surfaces and model details. I spray this second highlight on the driver and radio operator hatches. 
Now, instead of working with plates as before, I start working by pieces. Upper parts and the rear area also received a lighter color. Well, check now how the headlights looks on the model. Although pieces like engine grills are horizontal plates, I leave them in base color because they will have a darker finish. On the front plates, I increase the contrast by applying paint on the fenders and raised details. Also, I use the vertical movements on these front plates. For me, turret sides count as slope plates, so I also highlight them. But this time I apply the color by making vertical movements with the airbrush. This is going to create a pretty interesting streaking effect. The face color is very interesting, but we can keep working with it. This time I take XF62 again, but now I work with it like a shadow color. I dilute paint in a 10% paint and 90% thinner because I look for a very diluted paint. Turret hatches are a place to access inside the tank, so we can use the stone to create some dark weathering effects over the surface. I take the Vallejo model colors, matte and gloss varnishes and I mix them in a 50% ratio and dilute them with Vallejo's thinner. I like to give to my tank models a satin finish. The satin varnish mix is airbrushed over the whole model with no exceptions. It is very important to apply a couple coats just to make sure all the previous work gets sealed and protected. Later, I take just pure gloss varnish to prepare the surface for the decals. I only airbrush gloss varnish on the places where the decals are going to be placed. I cut the decals individually with a hobby blade and dip them in tap water. Decals included on the kit are quite okay. They are only a few white stars, and in my opinion they are too thick, but due to their shape the application will be easy. I prepare the model surface moistening it with water and I place the decals. Before applying micro liquid I check if decals are correctly lined up. On parts with texture like the turret it is very important to adapt properly the decal. Once decals are placed, I use Microsoft liquid to fix them on the surface. Usually I use 3 or 4 coats until I make sure the decals are fully adapted. Also sometimes a cotton swab becomes very useful because it can press the decal without damaging it. Once decals are dry, I seal and apply gloss varnish again. Keeping decals between 2 coats of gloss varnish will help us to prevent the silvering problem. To unify the surface, I airbrushed a last coat of satin varnish, leaving the model with the same finish. Now I leave the model drying for at least 24 hours in a box protected from dust. The Sherman tank has been primed, base coated, highlighted and also it has its decals applied. Ok, so we might call it on by now. I think this has been a pretty decent painting process for my first video. Next time we will be working with acrylics and we will be creating some heavy enamel dust effects. I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed the video and the modeling results. So thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.